Hello and welcome to the video. This is the seventh video in the Quadcopter Building for Beginners Series 3. And the difference with this one is that we've built this quad with a really interesting flight controller inside. The Brain FPV RE1 and the little MPB power distribution board underneath. This quad has very quickly become one of my absolute favourites out of all the quads that we have here. And that is due to the on-screen display. The on-screen display is vector-based in this thing, and for me, it uh, works so much nicer than the minimum OSD-based ones that we have on pretty much every other flight controller that we have. In this video, we're going to talk about that on-screen display in a little bit more detail, because we've just had a software update, and that's what I've been waiting for to make this final video in the series. The version of software that we've flashed on here that we're going to take a look at is version 3.1.6, brain-3 and that is based on Betaflight 3.1.6 but it has all of the Brain FPV secret source in here. Now the on-screen display on here even though it's vector based and does some very funky stuff can still be configured using the OSD tab in the Betaflight graphical user interface. If you go in there and you select the settings that you want and move them around the Brain FPV guys have made it so that that still is editing and changing the vector-based OSD that's on here. So that's simple. But what I want to do is fire this guy up. I'm probably going to keep the lens cap on, so rather than you be looking at a wall while I'm doing it, it's nice and clear. Let me just fire this thing up, connect it to my radio, and start recording the video off it. And let me just give you a little whistle-stop tour of some of the cool things that are in this new version of 3.16-brain-3. So here's the main screen with the lens cap on. I've turned on a few extra little features so you can see what we're looking at here. On the bottom right and bottom left hand corners, we can actually, because it's vector based, we can do this. We can actually see exactly where the sticks are. If I overlay the radio in here, you can see that as I move the sticks, they're actually represented in here. Now what they're actually showing you is the channel value that it can see. I have a little bit of a curve set on my throttle, so my middle throttle is about there, and that's just because this is such a powerful quad, it hovers around a third throttle, which is roughly there-ish. So that's the way it works. So a couple of things on the screen here. We obviously have the artificial horizon. If I move the craft around, you can see that moving. Uh, we have the battery and the amperage in the lower left-hand corner, and this is set up how I normally fly with those extra couple of things off it. Now we have the altimeter on the right hand side and we have the sticks at the bottom as well. So let's go into the menu and I'll show you how to configure some of these things and we'll take things like the sticks off the display because I probably won't fly with those but they're a really funky thing to show you the power of a vector based on screen display. Now to get into the menu you make sure of course that you're not armed is you take your throttle to the middle position take it over to the left and push the right stick to the top and then here we are we're in the menu and then we can navigate the menu just using that right hand screen so if we go into the brain fpv stuff at the top here is the on-screen display settings here's all the bits that you can see ability to select show sticks let's um just take that off actually that's not, not something I want to use the altitude scale which is that cool thing on the right hand side what color want we want the OSD whites and blacks and all that other kind of cool stuff as well also supports 3d mode so that's those we have the infrared transponder and the spectrograph setup now the spectrograph is really cool if you set, turn it on here and then arm the board and go and fly it'll actually show you where the vibration is that it can see on the craft so in addition to being able to use the logs and black box recorders and things to find out where you need to set stuff like your notch filter in beta flight you can actually see it live while you're flying your craft so we're not going to do that here at the moment. We'll go back there. We have things like the different profiles, the PIDs. They're all settable through here, as you'd absolutely expect. Let's go down to back. Then we have all the different features that you turn on, black box, the video transmitter, uh, bits and pieces. We're not using something like a TBS or the Immersion RC Tramps here, so we can't set all that stuff, um, although we can change things like the LED strip settings, 
the screen layout. So here's all the active elements that we can choose from with the Brain RE1 on screen display. We have the RSSI, I haven't got that currently set up. Main batteries displayed, horizon, horizon sidebars. Um, if I'm flying particularly high, I don't tend to have some of this stuff on, but it does mean you can change all this at the field, just like you can with a standard Minim OSD display. And then we have things like the PIDs and stuff too. We have the alarm set, and you'll notice that those are the same alarms that were in the graphical user interface, because most of this is actually set by the OSD tab in Betaflight. Different firmware information, so that's just uh, about what we're running, how it's running, a couple of things in miscellaneous. You can actually see exactly what the channel values in here as well. And then you can save and reboot it. So let's do that now. And there we are, we're back into the menu. And this time though, we have got rid of the sticks in the bottom right and bottom left hand corner. And this is quite uh, a messy little screen <laughs> for most people, but actually this is the way I tend to fly it when I'm doing longer flights. If I'm doing shorter flights, then I tend to turn off all of the vertical stuff in the middle so I can just see what's going on. It's worthwhile us taking a little bit of a closer look at how you get to that Spectrum Analyzer. In the menu, let's just go and turn it on. Let's go and save and reboot. And then when the board reboots, we'll actually notice an extra option at the bottom of the title screen. And that is throttle, middle, your right pitch up gives us the Spectrum Analyzer. So let's do that on the radio. And initially we're going to see that there's very little noise or it's right at the very low end. And the quadcopter is sat completely still. So let's move it on to somewhere where I can just do a very quick flight. Let me remove the lens cap and do a little bit of a hover and you'll be able to see as the quadcopter is moving around where we have the vibration on this craft and where potentially we need to think about playing with things like notch filters in things like beta flight. So that's the trick, to access the Spectrum Analyzer, make sure you've got the feature turned on, and then to access it when you're at the field, throttle middle, your right, pitch up, and you can see where the vibration is as you fly. Really cute feature with this vector-based OSD. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that haven't yet seen this on-screen display. The fact it's vector-based is really quite funky, and it's one of the reasons why this is probably the quadcopter at the moment that I pull from the shelf every time I want to go and fly. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.